Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson Ed Excel International A Level as well as GCE Biology Practicals. This is core practical 18. Investigate the production of amylase in germinating cereal grains. In this experiment we have to know that the seed contains an embryo as well as an endosperm. You need to know that in the cereal grains the endosperm is where the starch is going to be stored and also Towards germination, the developing embryo will release gibberellins, and these act on the layer outside of the endosperm to stimulate the release of amylase. Once amylase is released, it digests starch in the endosperm to convert it into soluble products like glucose, and these soluble products are transported to the embryo for aerobic respiration to produce ATP used during germination. We use a starch agar assay. So what we're gonna do is we will cut the seed around the XY direction. So we'll throw the embryo away and then we keep the endosperm because we want to control the volume or the concentration of gibberellin that the endosperm is exposed to to know which concentration releases the highest amount of amylase. So to do this, these endosperms are going to be soaked in gibberellic acid of different concentration to stimulate the release of amylase and then place them onto the agar plates during incubation, which is similar to something you can see here. Cut these off. Then try to soak them into gibberellic acid for a specific period of time. And that acid has to be of different concentration. And then after some time, then place them onto the agar for a specific period of time so that the amylase released from them digest the starch. And then after use iodine to see the regions where starch has been digested. So staining the agar plate with iodine after culture turns the starch in the agar to blue-black. Areas where starch has been digested do not turn blue-black. So the size of the clear area around the cereal grain indicates the amount of amylase produced. So the procedure is as below. The independent variable is the concentration of gibberellin. So it means you have to find ways you're going to vary this concentration. And then the dependent variable is going to be the size of the clear area around the grain. That is the result you have to measure. So we need to set up at least five different concentrations of gibberellin and then cut the seed as below and keep the part of the endosperm but discard the part of the embryo. We'll sterilize the endosperm halves of the seed by placing them in 3% hypochloric acid solution. This is to remove any microbials that are not wanted. So they're gonna be soaked for the same time and after we wash the seed thoroughly but quickly with distilled water and drain through muslin until the smell of chlorine disappears. So use stereophoseps to place the seed halves into the gibberellin solution and leave for 12 to 48 hours with a slightly loose screw to allow for oxygen to enter. After you place them onto the agar and incubate for a specific period of time, then control all variables like temperature, pH, agar composition as well as the volume of the agar, and then remove the petri dish from the incubator, open slightly and pour a solution of iodine to cover the whole surface of the agar in each dish. After staining, then you pour away the excess. Later, measure the diameter or find the area of the clear zone around the grain and record the results in a suitable table. Then you'll be able to know the one that has a wider diameter had the greatest amount of digestion and therefore that concentration of gibberellinic acid or gibberellin led to the release of the greatest amount of amylase and therefore had the greatest digestion. So this brings us to the end of core practical 18. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.